So now we're going to talk about chapter 25.2, which is beams of charged particles. So let's start off here, which is basically analyze how beams of charged particles are affected by uniform magnetic and electric fields. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw um, the field side by side and kind of let you see. So we're talking about uniform fields here. So um, here's my electric field over here. And remember, we're talking about the direction of positive charge moves. So um, if I have field lines, they'll be going like that. Okay, and then over here, I'll draw my magnetic field. Let's draw that going into the page. So there's a few fundamental differences. Even though I've kind of mentioned before, um, at the very principal level of physics, electric and magnetic fields are the same things, just viewed from different sides of a coin, if so to speak. Uh, magnetic fields really have to deal, deal with changing, uh, with moving particles, and electric fields are more like stationary particles. But we won't worry about that too much, and we'll kind of just, kind of just do it. So okay, so um, the co the common difference is obviously these both um, cause uh, charges to experience a force. But uh, the key differences here is this one is on all charges, and this one is on. I'll write that bit neater actually. The first one up here. Uh, it, um, all charges experience a force, and down here, only moving charges experience a force. Another difference is um, the charges here uh, experience a force, um, force based on the charge alone. So the more charge you have, uh, the more force you have, and that's because if we take a look at the formula right here, uh, the formula for this is uh, F equals uh, QE. That's all it is. The electric field strength and the force of a charge. Uh, so um, the fields, both of these are dependent on field strength, obviously, but um, this one, the only factor of a charge that's, particle that's important is the actual magnitude of a charge. Down here, however, um, it's dependent on uh, the charge and the velocity of a particle. So the faster the particle is moving, the greater the charge it will be moving in. So the greater the force that will apply, be applied on it. This one here um, acts in three dimensions. So basically, um, particles are always uh, particles, no matter how they're orientated or how they're moving, will always experience a force in the direction of the field lines. And this one um, acts in the plane uh, 90 degrees to the field lines. So basically, if you can imagine a magnetic field, if you can imagine a three dimension, imagine three dimensions. So you have the x, y, and z axis, like that, x, y, and z, um, whatever direction the field line, magnetic field lines are going in, uh, it, will, the, the, it only acts in motion in the other plane. So if the magnetic field is going in the z plane, only motion in the x, y plane will, exp will cause our magnetic force to be uh, felt. But if it's moving in the x plane, only motion in the z, y plane will cause the magnetic field force to be felt. So um, that's another key difference there. So um, let's kind of just see how particles move in, this fi in these fields. Firstly, uncharged particles have no force experience in either of these fields. But let's um, let's draw, say, a proton going in. Here's my proton, and going in, it will basically follow the direction of field lines and just do this. Sorry, it will experience a force and it will just do that, and basically hit that. Over here, however, if my proton's going in. So it's going in, and then let's do our right hand rule. Um, proton moving in. Uh, so basically, it'll experience a force this way. And what this will do is it will curve upwards. But the difference here is um, in uh, the electric field, it's, the force experience is always directly downwards, directly in the direction of the field lines. In this one, as this particle turns around, the direction of force changes. It's always 90 degrees to the um, velocity. So that's another key difference. And here, so I'm going to write that down as well, because that's quite a big difference. Um, always in the direction of the field lines. Whereas with the magnetic field, the force is experience is force is always 90 degrees to the motion in that plane. In the, oh, that's only the motion in that effective plane. Effective plane. So there you go. So there's another key difference. So what you'll have find here is the the eventual path of this um, electron, if you or proton, if you want to draw it, just kind of goes like that and goes down, and it becomes kind of a straight. Oh, it will always have a horizontal component, so it kind of just become like 
like that forever. But it will be accelerating downwards more and more, so it will become more and more like uh, sharper and sharper and sharper. But it will always have a, a, a component that way. Whereas with this, because the velocity keeps changing, as long as this remains in the magnetic field, it will end up moving in a circle. So you can kind of see the difference there. This one will kind of move around, it will get sharper and sharper and sharper, but always kind of, it will never go become a straight line downwards. It will always have a horizontal component. Whereas this one will just start moving in a circle. And that, and um, let's take a look at the negative charge. The negative charge here will just be moving exactly the same, just in the opposite direction. And same with this one. The negative charge moving op uh, opposite charge, the same direction. Except what's important to note is that electrons will almost always... Sorry, I'll draw the electrons in different color. Electrons will almost always have a greater deflection. And that's because they're just simply they're simply lighter. So the same force experience causes a greater acceleration. Because they have less lower mass. So that's quite simple. Um that's just basic Newtonian mechanics right there. So that's um uh, uh, so we've uh, qualitatively analyzed the deflections of beams of charged particles. So that's any positive particle experience with this kind of motion and any negative particle experience with that motion. And that's how kind of how magnetic and electric fields differ right there. So um how can um, we use these kind of properties in the, the, uh, velocity selection of charged particles? What's really um, important is often for ex scientific experiments, we want charged particles of a particular velocity, of a really, really specific velocity. And that's really difficult because they're so small, so we can't really manipulate them directly. But, uh, well, it's very difficult to. But we use this uh, idea here. But in the electric field, the force is based on the charge alone, and over here, the force is based on the charge and the velocity. And this is what we use to um, kind of distinguish this. So what we have is we have, uh, uh, we, we kind of make this chamber, and this is how electron guns work and how all other particle accelerators work. So we have a chamber here, and it has an electric plate here, and that's positively charged, and that's negatively charged. And then we'll have uh, proton returns. Sorry, uh, let me change around the direction of those charges. So that's negatively charged, and that's positively. Sorry. So this is positively charged, and this one here is negatively charged. And then what we do is we we combine an electric field and a magnetic field together, and we put we we um. Align them so that they're opposing, and what does that mean? I'll show you in a second. So basically opposing means that, say a proton moves in, a proton we know is positively charged, so the electric field will pull it this way. But we know if it's moving across like this, in the magnetic field, the proton will move upwards like that. Oh, and an electron um, will move, up. the electric field will cause it to go that way, but the magnetic field will go this way. Um, one thing I have to mention with right hand rule is that um, when I, the index finger of your right hand points in the direction of conventional current. So that's in the direction a positive charge would move. So when we're dealing with electrons and you're using the right hand rule, always point your right hand in the direction opposite to a velocity. So if velocity goes that way, point your index finger that way. And that's just the kind of thing I've, I think I've neglected to mention before, but now you know. So that's the kind of idea about... Um, uh, we place them opposing each other. And why do we do that? Because, let's take a look. Say we have a positive particle, or say we have a negative particle even, moving through. Or velocity v. Um, say this has velocity v. And what we have here, on the other side, is we have a slit open here. And this slit is aligned so that the slit opening is directly where we fire the particles from to begin with. Now these particles will experience forces here. Um, and this particle has a charge q. It will experience, uh, this is a proton, so this will experience a uh, charge downwards uh, of QE. And this is depends on the strength of the electric field, the charge times the electric field. But upwards, it will experience a force of Q, uh, Q velocity B. So this one here. So you see, we have it's experienced a charge in both directions, and then what happens is it can only pass through the slit if these two are equal or almost equal. If there's a slight amount of variance, because the slit is actually you know a, a three-dimensional hole and there's a little bit of space above and it's a little bit of space below, um, we will be able to get away with it. But this has to be basically almost equal. So let's come to equations. So if we equate these, 
where so we say they're basically equal. QVB equals to QE, and basically Q on both sides can cross that out, and we get V is equal to E over B. So the velocity, the only the part, the only particles that will be able to get through this gap here are the ones in which the velocity of the particle is equal to the ratio of our electric field over our magnetic field. And I mean, that's quite simple. Um, that's the, really the crux of it. It's because of this idea that the magnetic field depends on velocity and the electric field does not. And that's kind of, we use that as a defining factor to choose the, the particles with the right velocity we want. So some particles will have an increased deflection this way. And what happened here? This is because the magnetic field strength was stronger than the electric field strength. So that means the velocity was too high. So this means the velocity was greater than E over B. These, the, the particles that are moving too fast will be deflected upwards. And the same thing here, the strength of the magnetic field wasn't enough to overcome the strength of the electric field. And that means the velocity was less than our desired E over B value. And this is really how um, velocity selection of charged particle works by combining electric and magnetic field, equating them, and the only velocities of part of charged particles that can get through are the ones with a velocity that's the same as the ratio between the electric charge and the magnetic charge. And the last thing we're going to talk about is um, how we can determine the charge to mass ratio of um, and or the velocity of an electron. Uh, so basically, this I've already explained this before actually in a prior video, but I'm just going to do it quickly again right now. Um, basically, what you have is you have a magnetic field, and I've talked about this before. Um, and you fire an electron in, and you even and then the electron, as we know, will experience a rotational force, and and then it'll kind of move in a circle. And then what all you have to do is you have to um, equate the a magnetic force, which is QVB, to the to the formula which we know is a uh, for a centripetal acceleration, mv squared over r. Um, v is on both sides. We'll cross that out, cross the squared out, and we'll get QB equals mv over r. And then what we do is we move a Q, the m down here, and a b down there, and what you get is Q over m is equal to um, v over br. And look at this. Um, v, if we know the velocity of it, this electron, maybe by the, uh, the charge uh, selection we've done before, we can know um, the charge to mass ratio of this electron. That is, uh, and that means if we know the charge, we can figure out the mass. If we know the mass, we can figure out the charge. And also, if we do already know the charge to mass ratio of this electron, we can figure out the velocity because B and R are both constants. Well, R we can measure by taking a spray pattern inside a, inside a, a, a magnetic field and. Um, Magnet, uh, the magnetic field B value is obviously applied by us, so we know what that is also. So basically, this is basically I'm um, firing charged particles and watching the circular motion, and that is a principle for determining the charge to mass ratio for electrons, or also the if we know the velocity. Um, if I'm just going to show you a quick experimental setup which can demonstrate this, um, basically what you can do is you can get uh, you need a stable magnetic field so we can get two um, Helmholtz coils which I've talked about before over here and over here we'll have kind of electron gun and a gas chamber and the, ga and the gas chamber will kind of paint the electron pathway so the electron will come in and it'll get fired and it'll have a little um, centripetal acceleration and we have kind of our so I'll draw mag our magnetic field lines we kind of have magnetic field lines moving through this here through the Helmholtz, Helmholtz coils which have current passing through them What's more interesting is when you um, twist this um, tube of electron, the electron guns, around slightly, so there, there is a component of the uh, um, velocity of electron in the direction of the magnetic field lines, in this um, direction, in this axis here. What will happen then is that um, there will be a portion, sure there will be still have a uh, circular motion, but a portion of it will uh, be, the velocity will be unaffected. And that means you get kind of a helical structure. And this is kind of, ha this is actually how electron guns work. Through the application of an uh, electric field, sorry, not electron guns. This is how electron microscopes work. Through the application of um, an electric field causing circular motion, but leaving a component of that, uh, as we know through sine theta, uh, leaving a component of that in the same direction, of velocity unaffected by the magnetic field, and it kind of causes a, hel a helical spiral motion of electron, which can be impeded, and we can use that as an electron microscope. So that's all I have to say about beams of charged particles. I hope you learned something and enjoyed my video. And please visit my blog. Um, a bookmark my blog. It would really help me. And thanks, and I'll see you later.